The Nigerian police force committed more extrajudicial killings and other human rights violations during the period of the lockdown extension in the country, accounting for 59.6% of the total cases of violations. The police was followed by non-state actors, mostly private individuals, in sexual and gender-based violences. Violations related cases which accounted for 18.3% of the total cases. The National Human Rights Commission disclosed this in a report signed by its Executive Secretary, Tony Ojuku, which was on alleged human rights violations recorded between April 13 to May 4, following the extension of the lockdown to contain the spread of COVID-19 in the country. The report documented the various thematic areas in which the violations occurred, the nature of the violations, the disaggregated data on state-reported violations, the agencies of government responsible for the violations, as well as the response action taken to remedy the violations. To talk a bit more on this, we're joined via Skype by Lambert Opara, Director, Director Corporate Affairs, NHRC. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Good morning. Okay, you're joining us via telephone. All right, let's, yeah. your commission released a survey on the various incidents of human rights abuses allegedly perpetrated during the lockdown period. Please explain a little who are these set of perpetrators and what are the various forms of violations? Thank you very much. Um, you recall that the process of uh, documenting violations started by on the 31st uh, to 4th of uh, May. Um, shortly after the lockdown was announced by the federal government covering uh, ACT, uh, Lagos, Ogun, and then, of course, state governments also had also to uh, take measures to uh, protect citizens from the ravaging effects of the COVID-19. The commission had to take measures to ensure that citizens are protected um, from the violations of their rights. Uh, we had to set up uh, committees comprising of uh, staff of the commission civil society groups, and of course, members of the public. So within the period of uh, 13th of uh, April to 4th of May, we documented uh, violations totaling 104, as against 105 that was uh, documented between uh, 31st March and to 13th April during the first lockdown. So um, just like you rightly read out, the violations covered extrajudicial killings, uh, torture, uh, inhuman and degrading treatments, gender-based violence, and of course, the imagined domestic uh, violence. From your investigations, from your investigations, what did you deduce to be responsible for these human rights abuses and violations? Well, certainly there are indications, one, that there is excessive use of force by those entrusted with the responsibility of regulating the lockdown. By this, I mean law enforcement agencies. That's number one. Number two, there is also non-adherence to national and international human rights laws. And of course, the overzealousness on the part of uh, law enforcement agencies. These are some of the um, reasons. But there are other external reasons, perhaps, that would emanate uh, probably in the course of enforcement. Let me ask you about the figures. How reliable are these, especially with concerns about how you were able to get input from the various state actors? 
Well, it is a painstaking effort. The commission had to um, rely on various uh, sources to document this information. Apart from the reports from our staff from the various offices, we also had the collaboration from the civil society groups and then members of the public. We verified all documents, all, sorry, all complaints to ensure that um, they are very, very authentic. We also uh, have to contact the relevant agencies to ensure that these reports are very, very reliable. So um, they are not um, fake uh, reports. They are evidence reports based on facts. All right, let's, let's look at the states that recorded the highest number of cases of violations. Um, yes. What do you think um, accounted for this spike in the figures from these states? Well, um, you, you know, in the first report, Lagos had the highest number of uh, recorded complaints. And um, that you will know because Lagos is a commercial hub of Nigeria, very densely populated. And therefore, it will be difficult for quite a lot of people to understand what the government is doing in this respect. And then, of course, the law enforcement agencies there had probably taken extra measures to control uh, the, and regulate the lockdown. But um, in the case, in this, uh, in this recent report, the one that covered um, this period of, of, of to, oh, up 13 April to 4th May, Enugu came first. And um, as a result of uh, various infractions, uh, ranging from torture, inhuman, and degrading treatment. And of course, there are extrajudicial killings and uh, restriction on the freedom of movement, uh, unlawful arrest and detention, seizure of property, and of course, sexual and gender-based uh, violence. If, if I may uh, come in and uh, talk about justice, um, that seems to... Um, come to different people in different ways. People express a whole lot of uh, skepticism when they hear that, okay, these data, we have it. What are the efforts to ensure that justice is done and not late, but timely? How is the situation with finding justice for those whose rights were violated? And if they are pending, what are the challenges? Good question. Um... You know, when the first report was re released, um, there were, of course, public reactions. That is very, very important. That we get to know that this is what is happening is a very important milestone in getting justice. That's number one. So we also escalated this and made them the information available to the relevant agencies seeking their response. But there seems to be a new synergy. Um, there's a protocol that has been developed now between the commission and the presidential task force on COVID-19. Uh, so all the complaints documented are now channeled to the presidential task force, which will now send these um, uh, documented evidences to the various uh, agencies that are being accused of these violations. And we are expecting this agency to respond within the period of one month. After that, we'll be, another, other measures will be taken to ensure that justice uh, is brought to those who, whose rights are violated. And those who did this uh, violations will be held to account. All right, uh, Lambert Opara, Director, Corporate Affairs, NHRC. Thank you for your time on the news. We will get back to you to get an update on those cases. Thank you for having me.